Good morning. Y'all all all right? Man, I was sitting back there worshiping God like it was no other's business with y'all back there. It is exciting when you get the opportunity to worship God. And man, it's exciting. And I want to, I just want to thank my senior pastor because it is like that between us and them. And I love that dude. And the thing and the reason why I could say I love him so much, this series that uh, we, we just came off of, like nine weeks of Christocentric. And for those of you that have been here, um, it has been life changing for me. It has done a work inside of my life, and I've been in church for a very, very long time, and I'm just starting to, it's not even a feeling, it's a, it's a lifestyle change, and that Christocentric series has hit me deep because it's began to teach me how to learn and love my wife better, and, and that's, a, that's a word. It has just taught me how to do that in such a different way. It's taught me how to love my two boys. My 20-year-old, him and I have been at odds for a long time. and A lot of that is because of me. I wasn't ready to be a dad when he came into my life. And so we've had struggles. And what that has done for me now, this series, Pastor, and I thank you, it's shown me how to love him differently. It's shown me how to do that. 11 years with my wife, it's, it's showing me all over again how to do that. And I love her in spite of. And when you begin to love your neighbors, it helps me do different things on the job with loving people. So if you guys get an opportunity, um, Eddie might put it on the screen or go back to the podcast. There's nine of them. That series is life changing. So what I've come to do today, and I won't be before you long. I know we have a baby dedication. But I wanted to just share with you a little bit, and I'm going to talk about some things that Everybody won't get if you're visiting for the very first time because it relates back to the message that pastor has been preaching. But I just want to give you a little insight on the last couple of weeks of, of studying and why and how it has touched my life. And that I hope that a little bit of it rubs off on you. And I say that because I think that keeping Christ at the center and have a spirit of loving people from the inside out will make a difference in your walk, it'll make a difference in your life. So let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God. Move Derek out of the way, Lord God. I don't stand here. Consume me, Lord. I give away my control to you right now, Lord God. Consume me from the inside out, Father. That there is a word for your people, Lord God. I don't want to offend, Lord God. I don't want to make people upset, Father. But I want to do your will today, Lord God. And do it in such a way, Father that heaven gets the glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. I want you guys to keep your uh, Bibles open. Um, I'm going to read a lot of text because I want God's word to speak for itself, and and I might commentate on it, but we're going to start our text in Philippians 2, uh, 12 and 13 will be my target text. I'm going to read a little bit more just for context, and and then I'm going to get into reading some other scriptures, but my big idea, and what the big idea for the sermon is, and how I summed it up when participating in study, is 
God has a way of keeping us and sustaining us if we allow his spirit to guide us from the inside out. I need y'all to say something to me real quick. Say, Lord. That's not everybody. Say, Lord. I give up control. Consume me inside out. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Amen. Amen. Before I get into Philippians 2, I'm going to read 12 through 18. Let me give you a little background on what was going on. Paul was in a place where he was in jail. And it's, if you were with the Christocentric, that was a Colossian series. Philippians is right before Colossians. He was still in jail, working out his faith. <laughs> And what he was writing to them, he's, he was telling them to stay encouraged. He was there with the people when they got saved. He walked it out with them. And now he wasn't going to be here or there any longer. And because he wasn't going to be there any longer, he decided to pin the letter while he was in jail to encourage them. To say, you don't need me there God will take care of whatever's on the inside and make it manifest on the outside. And so when he began to write, he was encouraging them to keep the unity, to keep the faith, to be together, to be hospitable with one another, to get to know each other and what they were all about. So he wanted to encourage them. The Scripture Philippians 2, 12, 18 reads this way. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill good purpose, fulfill his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling and arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault warped in this warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold, your, hold firmly to the word of life. And then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run this in labor in vain, run or labor in vain. But even if I'm being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. One more scripture. If you want to turn to 2 Corinthians 5, 17, and we'll get started. I want you to oh, keep your devices because I want to read scripture today. 2 Corinthians 5.17 reads this way, and, and I think it's foundational to where we're going and what I'm going to be talking about. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. When we begin to work out our salvation, and that's really what Paul was talking about is working out our salvation, what was happening is when we get saved, it's not a one-time situation. And a lot of us begin to believe that it's just one time I get saved and that's all I do. But salvation is an active process. You have to stay engaged in this walk. And when you stay engaged in this walk, it, it, I even read it says something about you have to strenuously. The Greek word for strenuous, ek, ektonis. The Greek word, it means to stay the course. It means you got to work some things out. And that's what he was telling the people in Philippi. You've been saved, but now it's time to grow a little bit. You got to get off the milk and to begin to get on some solid food. See, if we always stay in the milk, our life is always going to be wishy-washy. We always go struggle. And we always going to do those things 
because we stand in the milk. The Similac children. And we got to stop that. It's time for us to eat some solid food. And when we begin to eat solid food, life is going to change and you're going to grow up and be a different type of person. You're going to grow up and be a different type of person. When you accepted Christ, to keep with our football analogy that you started in Christocentric, when you accept Christ, God gives you the football. And he tells you you can score every single time. Now, here's what Pastor said. I love this illustration. Does anybody know that we've already won? Anybody know? Did, did anybody go to the end and find out that we've already won this thing? So this is how Pastor put it. God has went into the other folks' locker room. He done took their cleats, their mouthpiece, their helmet, uh, their jock strap, whatever it is that they got. He done took it all. So when they show up on the field, see, they might be good because them Australian rugby guys are pretty tough. But if I got my helmet on and I got my shoulder pads on and I come with all my armor ready to play, I believe I can make some yardage and I can score some touchdowns because God has already taken care of the enemy. We got to live transformed lives, y'all. God has taken care of it, but we walk around thinking the enemy has on all the same stuff we do. So we get scary and we stay drinking milk and Similac because we don't want to grow. The seed, the divine nature has been deposited in us as soon as we accept the Lord. Pastor, you say all the time, when we accept God as our Lord and Savior, all the God you're ever going to get is in you now. And when we begin to understand, he's not giving you anymore. He gave it all. The cross of Calvary, he paid it all. So when you accept that he's the Lord of your life, he has deposited the, the, the divine nature inside of us. And now we got to get some sunshine. And we got to get some water. So, so if you think of that acorn seed, it has the potential to be an oak tree. When he deposits the divine nature in us, we have the potential to be great in the Lord. Think about nature, that little bitty caterpillar that's ugly, and sometimes we want to step on it. God has placed in him a butterfly. It's inside of him. It's not the caterpillar. God has created a new creation. And when we begin to understand that, that we are a new creation that's sitting dormant, that can control anything that we need to control, we will step out and walk differently in this walk. I got up here probably about a month and a half ago or so, the last time I had an opportunity to come before you, talking about my weight situation, talking about how I've been depressed and sitting up at 12 o'clock at night eating cornflakes and bonbons and all, all that kind of craziness. And the reason that my weight has always done this is because I was trying to work on the outside first. And when you work on the outside, you look in the mirror and you see your shape, and you're looking in the mirror. And when I turn around, I forget what I look like. When you begin to study God's word, and, and you're no longer a hearer of his word, and you become a doer of his word, the mirror is God's word reflecting back at me. 
And so when I'm not following his word, I, I can't remember what I look like. I can't remember what I look like because I'm not following his word. And I just sit. And I just become a hearer. And the divine nature that sits inside of me can't do anything. It has no power. And I can't see my reflection. We got to be able to understand what's inside of us. And once we begin to understand what's inside of us, we'll live different lives from the inside out. That's what Paul was telling the Philippians. Look, y'all not baby Christians no more. You're not. You need to begin to work out your salvation. It's an act of salvation. See, we get, we get it twisted. We think we can work for salvation. This kind of work. Oh, I'll be a greeter. That's work. I, I, I'll be working in the kitchen. That's work. I'm, I'm going to work my salvation out. No, it's an active. That's working in the church. And we're we going to get on that piece. But what I'm talking about is working out our salvation. Paul was in prison. And Paul was in prison penning that letter like we talked about. And when he penned the letter, he was talking about, man, I'm good. I'm all right being in prison. Because God's word is going forth. The imperial guard, they learning about Christ. People are finding out why they got me in prison. And they're hearing about this Christ that I serve. They, the people that don't even like me, that think we're in competition with one another. They, they even going out saying the name of And I'm okay with that. As long as Christ goes forward, I'm good. That's an inside-out type of living. He was rejoicing. Rejoicing, saying, hey, if God is going forward, I'm okay. See, Paul learned how to be content when he was on high. And he learned how to be content when he was down low. The circumstance didn't matter because the divine nature was welling up in him to move forward. I'm telling y'all, we will be a new creation. If we begin to follow what he's already deposited, we'll be something new and brand new in this walk, man. Paul wanted the people to work out. He, he says it like this in, in 1 Corinthians 9, 27. But I discipline my body and keep it under control. Lest every preaching, lest after preaching to others, I myself should not be disqualified from the prize. What I failed to mention in my illustration about scoring touchdowns, the flesh is designed to be your defense. And until we begin to pour into the inner man, the outer man can't reflect anything. The flesh will keep beating us up. So Paul says you have to discipline your flesh. So when the spirit man speaks, we go and do. But what we do is we let the world impact us and influence us. So we live an outside-in type of religion. So what the world does is tell us what we need to do, and then the church, me and you, react the same way. And now we have no impact in the world. Does anybody know that the world is antithetical to God? It's the opposite. It's the opposite. So when we let the world control us, the spirit man stays dormant in this walk. One of the ways you discipline your body 
I'm counseling a, a beautiful couple, marriage counseling. They are teaching me more than I can teach them. And the reason is, when you're trying to discipline your body and you're giving people advice about marriage and how to stay engaged, <laughs> it makes you start using it on that woman right there. I, I, I can't give advice and then stay the same. <laughs> That's what I'm trying. When you want to discipline your body and become a doer of the word, when you're giving advice or when you're standing in this place and you're talking it, then you got to start living it. So it disciplines the body to hear differently, to grow differently. We're on this continuum, guys. We're trying to get from drinking Similac to be more like Christ and eating solid food. And we waver because we don't discipline ourselves in the faith. One thing that's really been on my mind is, is the church and how we've become ineffective in the world. How I, see we oftentimes think of this edifice as being the church and we never think about us being the church. So when we walk into the edifice we put on our different faces. And so when we leave the edifice, we go back to doing us, and we forget that the church resides in us. So there are many gifts, but there's only one spirit. <laughs> there is many services, but there's only one Lord. <laughs> there are many works, but there's only one God. And when you begin to understand that all of us individually are the church, you won't walk in this place without him. Do you understand what I'm saying? You won't walk in here without him and your soul won't leave without him. So it'll change the way you love your wife. It'll change the way you interact with friends. If you know that you're bringing the church with you, the church doesn't stay here once we leave. If you name the name of Jesus Christ, the church goes everywhere with you. That's why we have to live this thing from the inside out. Because when the man cuts you off in the middle, in the, uh, I don't, I'm about to cuss, I, and I, I can't do that, hold on. When y'all get there, something should be in you telling you that's not what God would do. See, if we keep letting the flesh rise up, the spirit can never rise up. This flesh is trying to keep the spirit man down. And as long as we keep living like that, it's going to be difficult to walk this walk and to live this life together. Almost done. The maturation process. The maturation process. Here's some things. I got six items here. Stop relying on yourself. Lord, I give up control. Consume me from the inside out. 
given up control and stopped doing you is essential for leading and running this race. If it's all about you, it's less about God. So we have to move out the way. I thank those folks that came on Christmas on Friday and set up in our foyer area the ability to feed people and provide gifts to those that every Christmas go without. I saw the pictures on Facebook, told my family that I was with that maybe next year we gonna do that. Because I need that little dude right there to understand what the reason for the season is truly all about. We all realize Jesus probably wasn't even born on Christmas. Most likely was not. So when we get together to celebrate, we celebrate with gift exchange. And we very seldom think about the one who gave us our gift. We can't think about self when you're trying to live inside out. Provide hospitality to one another without grumbling. And I have the scriptures associated with what I'm telling you. So if you like those, I can send them to you. Hospitality without grumbling. I think there's going to be a day. I think there's going to be a day. We, we have this whole deal with the prosperity gospel. I'm with you, Pastor that they keep you focused on the world about what you can do down here. But all the money you can get down here. But when you begin to think inside out, you'll understand, get a good job. <laughs> and you can get everything you want down here. But those things that are internal, eternal, when we start talking about internal, if you call the name of Christ, helping people when they can't help themselves, that lasts internally. When it's not just about gift exchange, but you start building relationships with one another and inviting people to your home, disciplining the flesh, disciplining the flesh so that when the Spirit speaks, you go do. You go do. Ha. Love your enemies. You can only do that by having God on the inside. You can only do that by having God on the inside. There's no way he expects us to do that if he's not helping us. That's difficult. That's difficult. And even though this dude is not an enemy to me anymore, you know, at a, at a young age, I was molested. And God had to take me through a process of loving the person that molested me. How do you do that? Because I couldn't let the stuff that was going on in my head for all those years continue. I had to free myself, not the person. So I had to love them anyway. And it's a true love. I can talk to them today because I realized what Christ did for me on the cross. And when you understand what he did for us on we will love differently. We will love differently. And we'll be able to love our enemies. It's a different walk, guys. 
It's a different talk. It's time out for playing church and be the church. You have to have a forgiving spirit. Those people that have done you wrong, the divorces, the abusers, God says we have to forgive them. It's a different walk. Train like you want to win the race. If you're writing notes, don't put them in a book on the shelf next to the Bible that you don't read. Stop carrying the Bible in the car, hoping you don't have an accident. The protection is already inside of you. And we think about so many different ways on how to walk this thing out. We don't need those things. Let your light shine that other people might be able to get in relationship with Christ. Living from the inside out. Can't be afraid to die. There's either going to be a spiritual death or a physical death. We're not a prosperity speaking church. There's going to be some struggle for those of us that name God as our Lord and Savior. When the caterpillar is trying to get out of the cocoon, he has to stress and strain so that the fluids run into his wings. There has to be a struggle when we talk about salvation. If you want to fly, you got to press to get out of the cocoon so that you can fly and your wings are fully developed. But if somebody comes and cuts that cocoon and allows that caterpillar to get out, it'll never fly because it had no struggle. And we sit in here and a lot of us don't feel like we have any struggle. Wait a little while. Wait a little while. And I say this because you guys know this. You've read it. You've heard it. And I, I'm sorry to use this crass example, but it's real. People are seeking out people with guns to their head. Asking them, do you name the name of Christ? Y'all think I'm playing. Y'all have read it, right? Am I the only one that read it? And for those of us that are still on Similac, you might renounce God because we don't have enough in us. And we think the world is our home. To live is Christ, to die is gain. What does that mean? What was Paul saying? I'd rather be with Christ any day of the week to take me away from all of this. But if I'm going to stay, I'm going to work my salvation out. I'm not going to sit on my backside just staying there being quiet. I'm going to work this thing out. On this last Sunday of 2015, I'm in a different place in my life and I'm about to be finished. I got to have serious conversation with my father because his life 
he's getting older. I got to have a serious conversation with my mother. Ten years ago, I had all my grandparents except one. Today, I have none. As our life gets shorter, we start taking this a little bit more serious. And to have inside, kind of outside living, we got to be different people. If I'm still, when I run into a situation, going to get the bottle of Jim Beam on the, on the, on the, on the uh, counter, I'm still drinking milk. If every time my wife upsets me and I run to another woman, I'm still drinking milk. If every time I go out and do something for the flesh, I'm still drinking milk. If I never change from the inside what's going on in here, It'll never be reflected on the outside. Never. Let me read this scripture and we're done so we can go on our way. I'm going to read 2 Peter 3 through 11. Didn't want to hoop today. (laughs) Just wanted to read scripture today. I wanted to be serious going into January 2016. If there's any New Year's revelation, resolution, whatever it is that we have, I would ask you to say and to pray about having a life that deals with the inside out. Weight loss would be no problem. Weight loss would be no problem if that's what you want to do. That seems to be the hot thing in the beginning of a year. It's no problem for me anymore because the internal man has changed. Not dealing with the external. 2 Peter 1, 3 through 11. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Knowledge of him. Do we, if y'all go, re, do, go listen to Christocentric, please. The knowledge of him and what was done at the cross should keep us. Through the, these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature. You can participate. We ain't never going to be Christ. But the divine nature that resides in us, we can participate in it. Watch what he says. (laughs) Having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith. It's not a stagnant salvation. It's not something that we do one day and we get baptized and that's it. But add goodness. And we get goodness, get some knowledge. And to knowledge, self-control. And to self-control, perseverance. And to perseverance, godliness. And to godliness, mutual affection. And to mutual affection, love. We got to love one another differently. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed 
from their past sins. It's hard to win a race when you're running like this. Press for the things ahead. Stop dealing with all the stuff in the past. Forgive, and then you won't have to deal with it anymore. But if you're trying to get to meet, you can't keep looking back at what happened to you. Forgive it and move forward. Deal with it and move forward. The drugs, the alcohol, the sex. Deal with it and let it go and move forward so we can get to the prize. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. If all means all, never means never. And the word says you will never fall because when you're working from the inside out, God controls your thoughts and he's able to do things that you will never be able to do on your own. And you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, I give up control. Lord, I give up control. Consume me from the inside out. We thank you this morning. Father God, it's all about you, Lord. Let us take this message to heart, Lord God. I know that I have. And the way I show up now, Lord God, will be different, Father God. I've been walking this walk for a long time. And I'm seeing you more clearly, Father. Thank you for being the head of my life, Lord. I pray for my brothers and sisters, Lord God, not because of anything special, but I know where I used to sit, Father God. I was a sinner, Lord. My thought process was governed from the outside in, Father. Thank you for changing me. Thank you, Father God, for dealing with everything that I've had to go through in my life and bringing me to a point where I can rejoice in you, Lord God. I can lay it at the cross and I could walk away without picking it up anymore, Lord God. And I couldn't always say that, Father God. So, Father God, press upon your people that you're a true God. You're the Lord of the cosmos. And you wrapped yourself in flesh and died on Calvary's cross so that we might have a life and live in abundance. We thank you today, Lord God, and we bless you.